better because of clinical research. And you know, may not realise yet, but so are you. As Claire kindly said, I'm a nurse and midwife by background, and I've worked 20 years in clinical research within the UK. And I've got the honour of working for an organisation called the National Institute of Health Research Clinical Research Network. Obviously, rolls off the tongue very simply. <laughs> but describe, just explaining to you what that really is, is basically the, the research infrastructure that is put in place in the NHS and in social care to support the delivery of clinical research studies. It's existed for over a decade, but I think it's been quite a silent partner, and most people have probably not been aware that it even exists. My passion about research probably started at a very early age. I was one of those annoying children who constantly asked why, 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 and I kind of not, never got out of it. I think it was kind of embedded in me by my dad, who's an organic chemist, a type of scientist too. So he always, always encouraged us to question why we did things and could we do things in different ways, or could we improve them? So that's a bit about my background. What I want to do is share with you a little bit more about my professional experience in the last 18 months to do with COVID-19, but also some personal experiences that I hope when you leave this room, you'll realise actually how important clinical research is to our society and that you actually believe that you're here for research too. So I want to take you back to early 2020. January time, February time, when we were all happily going along with our lives. And we just started to hear about a new disease, a new virus that had been found that we, as a human race, hadn't faced before. And it was making people ill and sadly making some people die. What we actually were facing at that point in time, but we weren't aware of it, was a race against time. Normally within healthcare, when you go to see a clinician, they have options for what care you are given. And that is based on clinical research. But with COVID, we didn't have that. So if you'd been a COVID-19 patient in those early days, January, February time, there wasn't any specific treatment for you. Obviously, the clinical community would care for you as best they could, but we didn't have a vaccine. We didn't have any treatments. And to be honest, we probably didn't know very much about the disease. So they stood there on their own, isolated. Then I'm going to take you a little bit further through 2020. I'm sure we can all remember March 2020 when our world stopped and literally our world. The WHO called COVID-19 a pandemic, that it was going to impact the whole of the world. And I still think at that point, the majority just didn't realise the devastating effects it was going to have across the whole of the world. Millions upon millions of people since that time have been infected with COVID-19, and many sadly have lost their lives. And it was a race against time to develop treatments, to understand the disease better, and the utopia of hopefully finding a vaccine, because that was our way out of it. So clinical research became the hero of the day. What was happening in the UK at that time is actually behind the scenes, studies were being designed and studies were being developed so they could be delivered. And in the last 18 months, in the NHS, over one million people have taken part, specifically in COVID-19 research. It's a huge number of people the amount of research we were able to do in 18 months is probably what we could do normally in 10 or 15 years. And actually what that produced, the UK was at the forefront of clinical research. We as a nation supported the delivery of the AstraZeneca vaccine. We as a nation have found treatments to COVID-19. So people now actually have got a far better chance of getting better 
and not dying. And that's because of the work we've done to support COVID-19. So if you're a patient today having COVID-19, which personally for me was my dad two months ago, he got COVID-19, but when he went into hospital, he was actually offered treatment. They knew what type of oxygen and what levels to give him. They treated him with a steroid because we know that steroid actually improves people's chances. And he came home. And the funny, strange, quirky thing about that as well is that my dad, when he started getting better, reminded me and spent time talking to his clinicians that actually, back in the day when he did his PhD, an element of his PhD was about synthesis of, co of steroids, which might be the little bit in that jigsaw that might have actually directly helped him decades and decades later. So I can hear most of you thinking or maybe going, well, that's great, it's the scientists. Obviously, we need eminent scientists and clinicians to develop the studies to work out, hmm, that drug might work against COVID. But actually, in reality, none of that research would ever happen if we didn't take part in research. Nothing would change. No care would develop. It is fundamental that us and we join and actually take part in research because things change. What happens in research over decades is slowly, 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 each research study that happens, it influences and changes the care we get. So we all have the opportunity to have a, a longer, healthier life. So that's a bit of my example from COVID from my professional capacity. But I want to share with you a little bit of my personal story of why clinical research is so important and that's been galvanised in me. Is actually just over five years ago, I became that patient. I found a lump in my breast and after several scans, several biopsies, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And although how devastating that was to hear, I had hope because I knew that before me, tens of thousands of women who had breast cancer had stood together, taken part in research, and actually the care I was offered was based on that research. And I want to share with you just two little examples just for my care to give you understanding of what that means. I was told that I needed a mastectomy and I also needed to check that the cancer hadn't spread anywhere else in my body. The normal way that happens is actually the surgeon, whilst they do your operation, also sample your lymph nodes. I've got about 20 or 30 of them here. The only way previously to do that, in the majority of cases, is that they would remove all of the lymph nodes under the said arm. And although that really helped us understand whether the cancer had spread, it actually meant that you were at risk of getting a disease called lymphedema, which is when your arm is really horribly swollen and very, very painful. Because obviously your lymph nodes drain fluid back and they're not there. I wasn't offered that. I was offered something called a central node biopsy. I know it sounds a bit technical, but it's simply that they find out where one of the main lymph nodes is. They sample that and several around just by removing those. And they actually test those. And they prove them by research that actually by doing that, it's as effective as actually removing all your lymph nodes. So luckily, I haven't got any problems with my arm following my mastectomy. The other example is my breast cancer was driven by oestrogen. A bit annoying when you're a woman that oestrogen <laughs> drives your breast cancer growth. But there is a risk that actually it may come back. But again, over 20 years ago, women have taken part from then and to now to test a drug because scientists thought, well, 
could stop women developing and making oestrogen, could we stop their risk of the breast cancer coming back? So basically now I'm being treated with a drug that reduces my oestrogen, and there are women who tested that over two decades ago who are still walking around today having long and healthy knives. So I am always going to be indebted to those women who stood together and took part in clinical research. I'll give you just a couple of more examples, just to say, well, it's not just COVID or breast cancer. For women who get pregnant and they're at risk of having a baby early, so having a preterm baby, we found out with research, if we give their mums the steroid injection, it helps the babies breathe when they're born. If people have heart attacks now, we know that if you can treat them really quickly and give them a drug to either get, dissolve the clot or put a little stent in to open up the, the vessel that's been damaged, they've got a far better chance of having a long-term healthy life. That's all clinical research. So the clinical research you receive from your GPs, your nurses, your midwives, your consultants is based on clinical research. And it only moves forward. We only understand what's a different or better treatment if people stand together and take part of research. So what I would like you to do, not now because I haven't quite finished, <laughs> is there's two leaflets in your packets. You probably thought, what are they there for? These, we've already got a massive database in the UK that describes studies that are happening already in the United Kingdom. Take a look. There's a website address. Log on. There may be studies that you could help with now. But the message I would like you to take out of this room is every time you get the opportunity to be in a part of a clinical research study, please think about whether you could help. Sometimes it's a treatment, sometimes it's surgery, sometimes it's as simple as having an interview or filling out a questionnaire. Because without us and with people standing together and taking care, and taking part in clinical research, the science never moves on and care never moves on. Thank you. COVID break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.